Well, for my next video, I've decided to go way back in time. Not exactly to that date, but... Uh, this was kind of uh, inspired by a reply I got for a comment I left on one of the pages I subscribe to. And what's his name? NRHBNW, I believe. I don't think he's one of my subscribers, but... If he happens to come across this video, then uh, just kind of put a little spur into my head for, for doing this. This is after I did the uh, video for all them diecast cars. I haven't put them away yet. I uh, decided to dig through and find all my grandfather's old uh, wartime memorabilia. And just kind of give you a, a quick once over of it here. Oh, where to start? Well, a newspaper here that we started on Friday, January 14, 1941. This is the uh, Puyallup Valley Tribune from Puyallup, Washington. It's down in Pierce County. I don't know the significance of this. Uh, just kind of reading through here a little bit. But uh, there's a little letter here. Eight men enter army this month. I don't think my grandfather would have signed up that early because he didn't sign up until 1942. I have a letter around here somewhere that he uh, wrote up explaining it. But uh, I'll have to go through this and just see what I can find. One thing, being a car guy that I found was interesting. This old Dodge ad. Coming in. See the new 1941 Dodge job rated pickup and express model. It doesn't say anything about pricing, but a uh, pretty neat old ad. So, I've got two copies of this, this uh, newspaper. I don't know why. So, I like this one here. Police busy in 1941. Annual report show more drunks. Wish that was all the problems we had now. So, uh, Grandpa was part of the... Uh, three, there we go, 364th Fighter Group. He was in the... 385th Fighter Squadron. That's their, their patch. There. Actually, one thing I haven't noticed was the patch. I wonder what I did with that. Huh, okay. Uh, just some, some old paperwork. Here's some snapshots. There's his uh, squadron from England. And I know I found him in here once. I think he's in the fourth row. Yeah, I can't, uh, can't see too well. There's what he was a crew chief for. P-38 Lightning. He was in Honington, England. This is actually one of his snapshots from the book that I uh, got. And then they retired the 38s while he was over there and they went to the P-51 Mustangs. So let's just go through a few things here that I thought were kind of neat. There's an old ration card. Dated uh, 21 October 1945. That was getting towards the end of his service. If we flip this over gently, you see uh, cigarettes. Got his ration for. Candy bars, roll. I don't know what roll is. Toilet paper, maybe? And uh, chewing gum. Looks like he got partial rationing on that. A uh, membership card. This must be for the NCO club. He was a tech sergeant when he got out. This is, would have been the Army Air Corps. Yeah, NCO club. Mm, individual pay records. There's nothing in those. They're both both empty. One of them, I think this one here actually has his... Oh, let me take it back. Maybe just this one. Has his uh, shot records. Gently trying to open these up. These are very old. Yeah, old immunization register. Smallpox, typhoid, tetanus, yellow fever. No yellow fever. Other vaccines. Blood type A, it looks like. I'm trying to read these and keep the camera in the general area. So, just going back in history a little bit here. Camp Kilmer. I don't know if this is where he embarked from or if this is where he came back stateside from. 
uh, I'm going back to civilian life. Just a little guide the military provided. Give me some recommendations for uh, what to do when you got out of the service. An enlisted man's identification card. European theater. Staff sergeant. Home address was in Puyallup. I don't know why that's crossed out. I haven't been able to read what it said. But uh, birthplace was Puyallup, so... He was born in 1920. If there's anything on the back of this one. Gently try to flip this over here. Yeah, a little bit. Issued 4 June 1944. If I was born or if I was alive back then, that would have been my birthday. Yeah, Hump Air Crew lunch bo Box Lunch. This lunch was especially prepared for Hump Flying Crews and is to be saved for turnaround at China bases. I don't know what this is from, because I don't think he did that. He wasn't over in the Asian theater. One interesting note that I got a kick out of. Let's see, where is it? There we go. Army Service Forces Transportation Corps. New York Port of Embarkation. That's my grandfather's name, Tech Sergeant Perry K. Pearson. That's probably his service number. 35th Fighter Squadron, 364th Fighter Group, returned to the United States on the ship Queen Mary, Gennard White Star, which sailed from Southampton, England, 4 November 1945. So he got to ride on the old Queen Mary when she was still in service. remember him talking about that a few times. Yeah. Autographs. <laughs> That's kind of neat. So there's his birth number. I'm assuming that's what that is. It was in the same section, same uh, envelope. Headquarters is his Class B pass. 10 August. I thought they spell August 1944. And below the privileges stated on the reverse side from the commanding officer. Pass is authorized a soldier to whom is issued to be absent from his billet area when not on duty or due for duty except between 0100 and 0600 hours on any day and to visit any place within the ge geographical limits of doesn't have anything written in there this pass must be used together with some proper means of identification lists the different forms on there and whatnot hopefully that's coming through a little bit I know they're kind of old and faded oh what else can we go over I've got a nice little display set up here here's something neat after he passed away my aunt uh, went ahead and had him registered. Uh, so what's it say here? World War II memorial memorials. Uh, it's been in my so Perry K. Pearson has been entered in the World War II Registry of Remembrances for participating in World War II and helping our nation with the greatest military victory in history. There's the certification date. So his name has been registered in. So what do we got here? Well, this is uh, like shipping instructions. A little bit of a this. I think this was for his uh, reunion for his fighter squadron. This video is getting long already. This may be a two-parter. Uh, this first section here was for flying personnel. He was not a pilot. There we go. Duties: crew chief, P-38 and P-51. The 385th Fighter Squadron. He went in as a private. He was a tech sergeant when he got out. Actually, I think he was. I seem to remember him saying he was. Uh, they uh, automatically gave him tech sergeant because they needed crew chiefs for the P 38, so he went straight from a private to tech sergeant. And let's see, I've got some documentation on where he spent his time, too. Uh, some mechanical. Crew chief, there it is again. What were your duties, crew chief for the P 38 and P 51? Who was your pilot? You had Warner, Husted, is that Radley? Looks like an R, or P. Adley, must be Radley. DeMille, and Kernan, Kiernan, was the rest of your crew? Mike Fix, and Franz Peterson. There it is again. Do you know the names? The planes you were responsible for P 38 Lightning, 
P51 Mustang. What type of clothing? Where is it at? Did you prefer to wear while working? Coveralls. I get a kick out of this one. Did you wear your baseball cap with the bill up or down? He wore his up. Uh, looks like that for, for that document. Yeah, if we go over here. British edition of the Yank magazine. August 24, 1945. Got a 3rd May. Or no, May 18, 1945. Again, the ink, some old wartime photos and whatnot in here. On the eve of VE Day, Piccadilly. How the Allies beat the German army. And maps of the. Uh, huh. This is kind of neat. I just noticed this. October 1942, Hitler's high tide. Shows the German occupation. And then May 1945, the tide runs out. A little bit right in Germany there. Huh. I hadn't noticed that before. Haven't really gone through these a whole lot since they are kind of fragile. Italy, campaign on the boot. All the old, uh, Old photos. If anybody wants any more information on any one of these, let me know. I can do some more videoing. Main streets of America. You look back home since you went away. <laughs> photos of, there we go, Providence, Rhode Island. New Orleans, Louisiana. Evansville, Indiana. Yeah, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Looks like a rainy day there. Huh. And then over here, a couple of uh, stars and stripes. Got one here. President Roosevelt dies. It's what, Friday, April 13, 1980, or, excuse me, 1945, 1984. I haven't really read through these a whole lot, and then we've got the next day, Saturday, April 14, 1945, World Mourns FDR, Truman takes office, meets military aides, Vienna falls to Soviets, bag 130,000. 